you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another, another cutting tutorial. Today I'm happy to be cutting out with you the vintage Mabel, actually it's the Mabel Vintage Handbag by Swoon. This is a free pattern on this website. I think it's going to be a really quick sew, takes minimal hardware and minimal supplies. So I'm super excited to be um, cutting this out today. It's been on my bucket list to do for a while and I'm finally getting around to do it. I will be doing a few things different, not too many things different in this. Um, I will be, once we get to the tutorial, um, turning the bag slightly different. Uh, in the pattern, it turns it along the top. I think we're gonna try to turn it through the bottom of the bag. Hopefully it works. Um, and then sewing it at the bottom up through a zipper pocket, which we're going to add um, into the, the lining of the bag. Um, I'm also going to be adding in some three quarter inch D rings to the handle. So that gives us an option of adding a, um, crossbody strap. So it can be a shoulder bag, crossbody bag, or a handbag. So I'm going to be doing a turn lock closure for it. I'm not doing magnetic snap. I'm doing a turn lock. Um, interfacing differences I'm going to do. This bag uh, calls for quilting cottons. I'm making mine in vinyl. So my main stabilizer, I'm actually going to use EB Fuse Heavy from Emmeline Bags. It's equivalent to a Decaville Light. If you are using cotton for your exterior, definitely use um, Peltex or Decaville Heavy as the, stat, as the pattern states. But because I am going to be using a thicker vinyl, um, I think that the Decaville Light or EB Fuse Heavy will suffice good enough for that. My cotton pieces, of course, I will back with EB Fuse Light. Did I say Decaville? No. My exterior is going to be interfaced with EB Fuse Heavy. My lining pieces, which are cotton, will be um, interfaced with EB Fuse Light, which is similar to a SF101 or a medium woven interfacing. I hope I didn't mix up my EB Fuses. <laughs> Anyways, heavy on the exterior, light on the interior. Um, in my flap, I am going to use Decaville Heavy in my flap just because I want to make sure I have a nice and rigid flap. So. Yeah, I think I still will use Decaville Heavy in the flap, and then we will, of course, turn it uh, slightly different. Um, again, the crossbody strap I will be making, it is going to have a, a raw edge because I am using a thicker vinyl, so all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make a half inch only crossbody strap. So I will be take, just cutting out one inch the width of my vinyl, and then folding that in half, and I'm going to edge paint that whole length, yes, I said it. I'm gonna edge paint that whole length. You can definitely leave that raw, but that's just something I'm adding in. So for my hardware, I will be adding in two three quarter inch D-rings so I can attach the crossbody strap, like make my connectors with my handle. I will be adding in rivets and I will be adding in, you will need a two half inch swivel clasps and a half inch slider if you're doing the crossbody strap. That's otherwise, oh, and then of course I'm adding the zipper, a very small zipper for the lining. So you will need uh, some zipper and a pull as well. But besides that, this bag has very minimal hardware. I'm super excited to get into it. Let me show you the fabrics that I'm going to be using. So for this one, I'm going to be using this glitter vinyl. Uh, it's called Pin Up Pink Viva Vegas Glitter from Galaxy Customs. I think it's gonna make this bag super cute. Look how amazing that glitter is. And then for the lining, I am using this kind of shimmer. It's got glitter in it as well. I got this from uh, dressso.com out of Vancouver. And this is called Starlight Metallics by Maywood Studios. So, because I will not remember what this is called later. So this is where you get to see that salvage. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be using to make this bag. So I have all my pattern pieces cut out. We've talked about interfacing. I'm not gonna cut the interfacing pieces with you today, but I will go through and explain what you need to do with those pattern pieces. So let me get this all cleaned up and we will start cutting out our vinyl right away. I just realized I forgot to mention in um, the beginning of the intro that I do not have a sample of this bag, mainly because I have not made it yet. 
I do have a link to the pattern that's free on the website below with Swoon. There's plenty of tester photos there to give you an idea of what the bag looks like and to give you lots of inspiration for choosing your vinyls. Depending when you're watching this, I may have the tutorial up already and I probably have my meet the bags video up as well. So the reason I don't have, I can't show you a picture because I can't, I do not own the rights to other people's pictures, only to my own. So yes, please do check out the Swoon website or depending when you're seeing this, see if I meet the bags or my um, tutorial is up already. Um, and just a reminder, I am shooting this live, so you will hear background noise in my home as I am working out of the den of my basement. That is where my studio is, and I live on a busy street, so you will hear airplanes as I live by the airport, street noise, and possibly noise from my kids upstairs and my animals. So I apologize in advance for that. Please be kind when you make comments, and let's get cutting this bag. Okay, so I have my vinyl here. Now, this pattern does not have a cutting chart. All the pieces have um, what needs to be cut on each of the pattern pieces. So I will be crossing them off, off the pattern pieces as I go with my air racing sew line pen. This is just to help me keep track of what I have and um, make sure I don't forget to cut anything out. So the very first thing I'm going to do uh, is actually draw out my half inch crossbody strap, which I am adding to this pattern. So I am doing it the full length of my roll of vinyl. Now this, I am only doing a half inch because this is a very tiny bag and I want it to be nice and delicate. Um, this strap, I'm going to be folding it in half. So it will have a raw edge. So all I'm gonna do is draw a, where is my pen? A one inch line. So when I fold it in half, it'll become a, uh, half inch. The reason I'm not doing this as double fold is because I'm using half inch hardware and I think this vinyl is just going to be too thick to be able to go through the swivel clasp and all that and my slider for that vinyl. But I definitely want this. Another good thing you could use is if you had a chain, you could definitely use that instead of, um, of making a strap. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to make my strap. I always draw my part pieces out on the back of my vinyl. Um, that way I know I have enough and everything is placed in a way that I don't I have minimal waste so if I don't have room for one of my pattern pieces I can always go back and redraw it whereas if you cut it right away you are completely committed to that cut so um, as I go through here actually I guess I don't have to draw that center line so we're just going to fold it in half so again, this is, I usually don't do my crossbody straps this small, but I just want to have a nice and delicate one for this teeny tiny bag. Right, so there is my crossbody strap all done. That's a brandy added in part. <laughs> okay, so first thing I'm gonna grab out of here is my flap piece. So we're gonna draw out our flap. So we need one exterior and one lining. So we're going to draw out the exterior and then we'll do the lining later on. So I draw across here and when I get to where that fold line is, I just make a little line at the top and the bottom. So when I flip my pattern piece over, I can line it up and get a perfectly marked piece. Now I'd never fold my vinyl on the fold when I cut because vinyl being so thick you always end up with a, like an extra quarter of an inch or so and we want things to fit properly so drawing it out is always best you can see my two lines there I'm going to line it up like so and then continue drawing my full piece Okay, so there's my flap across out here that I have my exterior fabric done and I'm going to put this pattern piece aside. I will put it with this when I do get that cut out. So that's one piece done. This is a super fast cut out so shouldn't take us too long. Okay, we have to cut two exterior fabric of our main panel. So I'm going to draw this out in the exact same fashion. it over and draw the other half so 
so that's the main. And we need two of those. Now, as you can see, I'm not working up this way in my vinyl. And if you've watched my cutting videos before, you will know that in my head, I like to, if I'm not going to be using a full roll of vinyl, I like to always make sure I have at least a cross body straps worth up on the other side. So I'll work myself across and then anything that's left over for a cross body strap that I can combine with another roll of this that I may have for another project. I'm always trying to think of how to have minimal waste and make the most of my investment because fabric and vinyl are definitely investments in bag making. So you want to get out as much as you possibly can out of each and every roll of vinyl or meter of fabric that you use. Okay, so let's flip it over and do the other side. Okay, that's the main. Oops, and then I'll mark on here that I'm done the two exterior. And then set that aside. Next, we have our exterior gusset. And it says we need two exterior gussets. Let me full bottom edge. Oh, that's for interfacing, okay. So we need to draw two exterior fabric. Okay, so we need two of these. It was confusing me because it says fold here, but this isn't done on the fold. This is done, um, that is a fold that you do for your interfacing to keep it out of the seam allowances. So this is just two pieces separate from one another. We need two of them. That's one. And I'm gonna do the other one kind of opposite this way. And I guess it doesn't really matter. Gusset and gusset. Cross off that we're done the exterior. Let's go back in here, see what else I need. And I think that's all we need from that, except for our handle piece. Um, where is the ruler I'm looking for? There it is. So now we are doing a three quarter inch handle. So it says to cut it 10 inches by three inches. I'm actually gonna cut mine a little bit bigger. I'm gonna cut mine 11 inches by three inches because I am going to fold under my raw edges on my handle. So I wanna just kind of accommodate for that. So I'm cutting mine three inches by 11 inches and then marking a one and a half center line and it's at the end of this handle where I will be connecting the d-rings for the crossbody strap and you will see when we get there how we do that so there's the handle and I believe would you believe that is all we have to cut for our exterior fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all of this out. I'm going to start with that crossbody strap. And I use a rotary cutter to cut because I do have uh, tendonitis in my wrists and my elbows. And I find that a rotary cutter does not hurt it at all, whereas scissors do. So I've gotten really, really good at using a rotary cutter. It's super fast. I like it. So there's our ultra skinny crossbody strap. 
don't have to do anything else with this crossbody strap so i'm going to put it in my finished cutting and interfacing bin so that goes in there then we can go ahead and cut out the other pieces And you can see I have plenty left over, so I do have a crossbody strap to go with my other roll of vinyl for any project I want to do in the future with this glitter vinyl. So there is my flap, and I want to keep it with my flap piece. And I see that I still have to cut interfacing and aligning, so I'm going to put this back into my to be cut bin. Okay, that's one main. to cut through two layers of it obviously that wouldn't have been good okay those are both my main panels and you can definitely see how small this bag is going to be so again i have to cut my two lining fabric so i'm going to put that in there One gusset. Super fast to cut up. Love it. Two gusset pieces. And again, I am going to have to cut lining fabric. So I'm going to put this back into the things to cut pile. There is my handle piece. I don't have to do anything else with that. So I can put it in my finished pile. And then the only other thing I am going to cut out is because we are adding a zipper pocket. So I like to do my zipper pockets with an overlay. Um, you can get paper patterns of these all over the place. I have these amazing acrylic templates from So Yours. And I just have to decide how wide I want my zipper pocket to be. So I think I'm actually going to do a only like a six and a half inch opening for my zipper. So it's gonna be an overlay that's about that big. It's gonna be a tiny zipper. It's more for purpose. So um, again, I'm gonna cut out my overlay with only a six and a half inch opening. Um, you will be doing your zipper pocket, whatever your preferred method is. I will be doing the overlay method. You can definitely do it other ways. And when I get into the tutorial, I do have tutorials on the different ways of doing uh, these pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to cut this out and then we will come back and I will get, uh, we'll start cutting the lining. All right, on to the lining. As you can see, this is so fast to cut out. So fast. I just love this vinyl. I bought a yard and or a meter and a half of this and uh, wishing I had bought more. It was on clearance at Dress Sew and it is just so incredibly pretty. Okay, so we are going to be cutting multiple pieces at the same time. And I am actually gonna use the vinyl pieces I just cut out rather than doing it on the fold just because it makes it that much easier. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to fold it wrong size together upon itself or right size together, it doesn't really matter. First thing I'm gonna do is take my main panel. Again, I don't want to waste this fabric if I don't have to. There we go. So I'm going to take one of my vinyl pieces and lay it down. Oh, Dexter says hi, everybody. Can you hear him up there? 
Coco's being super quiet, good girl. Holy. All right. So I'm going to use my vinyl piece as my template, cutting this too thick so I can cut both of my main panels out at the exact same time. I believe Dexter is barking at the cat. They like to play together. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to talk interfacing. So because I'm using a thicker vinyl, I'm going to, I probably wouldn't even have to interface, but I think I'm going to. Um, you have this pattern piece that's called main panel stabilizer for Pellon Peltex. You could also use Decoville Heavy. So I'm going to use EB Fuse Heavy, which is uh, similar to a Decoville Light. I'm going a lighter interfacing because I'm using a thicker vinyl and I think that'll be enough. So I would cut my stabilizer piece out the same way as I did this and then I'm going to fuse it outside of the seam allowance onto the back of my two exterior pieces. So again if you're using cottons make sure you are using Peltex or Decoville Heavy for this. Um, if you're Canadian or if you buy EB Fuse Heavy from Emmeline Bags and you're using cotton you could always use two layers of EB Fuse Heavy that um, kind of makes it an equivalent to a Decoville Heavy, which is really good. But again, I'm going to use one layer of EB Fuse Heavy, which is equivalent to a Decoville Light, only because my vinyl is so thick and I think the Decoville Heavy um, would just uh, be overkill for that. So you'll have to do that for those. And then for your two lining pieces, if you're using cotton, you will want to back those with the medium woven interfacing. And I am using EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags, which is equivalent to an SF 101 or a um, any medium woven interfacing. So again, I will not be cutting interfacing with you in this video as we all use different interfacings. I will just explain how we do it. So I'm going to put this into the to be interfaced bucket. And we're done with that piece. Moving on, actually not doing the flap yet. Let's do our gusset pieces. So again, I wanna cut them both at the same time to save time. So folding it in half, take my pattern piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut two of these. Now the exterior for the gusset piece, if you're doing it in cotton, of course you would back it with your woven interfacing, um, but it doesn't have a main stabilizer on the sides. So I will be doing my lining pieces with EB Fuse Light and I'm not gonna interface my exterior pieces. Now, if you're trying, especially if you're on a domestic and your machine is sensitive to thicknesses, that is where this fold line comes up, that um, for your exterior pieces, if you're doing them in cotton, uh, you would fold at that line and then use this to cut your medium woven interfacing with that folded under. I don't need to do that, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, cut two. Oh, I lied. That is for, that's what you would do for the lining pieces. So for your SF-101 to keep it out of that bottom seam. Again, I'm not going to worry about cutting it out of my bottom seam because I am on an industrial and I'm not worried about that thickness. But if you are, you can definitely do that. So that is that. Gusset pieces are done and going into the to be interfaced pile. Next, we have our flap. So I need to do my flap lining piece. Again, I'm going to just use my actual vinyl piece as my template just because it's already been cut on the fold and you can make it so they're exactly the same size this way. Go ahead and cut that out.
Now keep in mind when you're choosing your fabrics, um, I did not go with a waterproof canvas for this one, for my lining, mainly because it's a small bag. Small bags are hard to turn. So I think between the thickness of my glitter vinyl and the stickiness of my glitter vinyl, because that's I'm posing a challenge for myself right there, but it's going to be absolutely worth it because it's going to be gorgeous. Um, if I had used a waterproof canvas, I think it would have been really hard to turn. So that's why I chose cotton. So again, for the flap, I would back this piece, my lining piece with a woven interfacing. But for this flap, you're going to go ahead and they have these stabilizer pieces. So I am actually going to use EB or Decaville Heavy for these stabilizer pieces because I want to make sure that my turn lock has something to grab onto really good as well as um, give that flap a great structure. You have to remember this flap is also going to be holding our handle and supporting our crossbody strap if you're doing that. So I think in the flap using the Peltex or the Decaville Heavy are great or two layers of EB Fuse Heavy if you don't have Decaville Heavy. So these I will be fusing as per the pattern pieces state. I don't really know where they are at this point. I'm assuming they're going to go like this. So that's what you would do is put those on there. So that is done. And I'm going to put these into the to be interfaced bin. What else do we got? Oh, do you know what? I lied. The exterior gusset does have stabilizer piece. I didn't see this piece. So um, again, it's calling for Peltex. If using cotton, um, use this piece to cut out your Peltex or Decaville Heavy piece. I'm just going to once again use EB Fuse Heavy, which is like a Decaville Light for my gusset pieces. So um, yeah, so I missed that somehow. So definitely we'll have to do that as well for your gusset. So I'm going to put this with my gussets. So just to re refresh our lining gusset pieces, you're going to fold the main gusset piece in at that fold and that's what you're going to cut your medium woven interfacing to. And then you're going to use the gusset stabilizer pattern piece for your exterior pieces and you are going to fuse it on like so outside of your seam allowances. Now, if you are using doing a cotton handle, I am not doing a cotton handle. I'm doing a vinyl handle, so I'm not going to worry about this. But if you are doing a cotton handle, you will want to cut the handle stabilizer piece out of your Peltex or your Decaville Heavy um, and keep it outside of the seam allowances as well. So it'll be right in the middle. Um, again, I'm not going to worry about that because I am using vinyl, but definitely follow along in the pattern if you are doing a cotton bag with cotton handles because you will definitely need this to make sure your handle isn't going to tear off of your bag. All right. I think that's it. Fastest bag ever to cut out. Oh, I know what I forgot to cut out. If you're doing it my way, you are also going to want to cut. Let me go back down to the table, back down to the table because we are doing that zipper pocket. So we need two zipper pocket lining pieces. So the reason I'm doing the zipper pocket is I'm going to leave an opening in the a large opening in the bottom of our lining gusset piece to turn the bag through when it's time. And then I'm going to pull that lining up through the zipper pocket and sew it shut through there and then top stitch the zipper pocket shut. And that's why I'm adding the zipper pocket in. It's going to be a very small zipper pocket, but it's going to have a function for the construction and you'll be able to put a few things in there. So I'm just going to guesstimate. I am going to, this doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to cut two pieces at six inches by nine inches. We will have to probably trim that up, but we can definitely do that later when we get into it. And these will also have to be interfaced with a woven interfacing. And my rotor cutter is dull. I think in my last video I said I was going to change it and I never did. So, so yes, my two zipper pocket lining pieces. And this is not in the pattern. This is a brandy thing. 
Now it's the fastest bag ever cut. We have everything cut. I'm going to go ahead and interface and then I will start working on the tutorial for this. This is also a class that we are doing in um, May 2023 on Thursdays. So depending when you're watching this, you can join the membership side if you'd like to take part in those classes. But honestly, you will not see this cutting video until those classes are done as it is member exclusive until after the classes. Sorry about that, but you can definitely go back and you can uh, join the membership for Thursday classes and you can see all of the replays all the way to back to when we started doing the classes over a year ago. So um, yeah, that's always an option. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this cutting video. Um, if you did, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can definitely buy me a coffee. That link is down below in the description. I already mentioned the membership side. Check that out and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.